Hey everyone, welcome to Books and Boba, a book club and podcast featuring books by Asian American and Asian authors. We are your hosts. I'm Marvin Yu, and I'm Rira Yu. And welcome back to our first book club podcast of 2017. It's yeah. a whole new world, and <laughs> actually, this book actually is pretty timely. Um, this month we're reading, or, or this month we read. Something in between by, by Melissa De La Cruz. Mm-hmm. It and, was. Um, it got real. Yeah, you're like a prophetic choice by Vera <laughs> you. Well, like I knew that we were going to read this in January, and I knew that immigration has always been like a hot topic in politics. <laughs> so I kind of figured that it might be timely. I just didn't know how timely it would be. Yeah, I mean we're so. We just had our LA meetup and discussion. Um, we tried some Google Hangout to bring in some people from outside the city. And um, I think next month we're going to try to do a dedicated Google Hangout for people who want to phone in and talk about the book Yeah. Um, before recording the podcast. But uh, it just so happened that this meetup occurred a day after, yeah, a day after. Yeah, the, um, the immigration executive order signed by our new our new president yeah, so and like the whole protest at jfk that happened yesterday yeah lax today lax today <laughs> yeah crazy so uh yeah the book is uh, something in between by melissa de la cruz uh i don't i don't have the <laughs> book jacket <laughs> wait let me let me get it because from... i got the kindle version so I, got, I don't have the back i got the hardcover because it's only available in hardcover right now and i, I don't really like when I'm reading hardcover books, I don't like dealing with the the book jacket. Yeah, same here. Yeah, so I took it off. Let me so, just find it. Um, Jasmine De Los Santos has always done what's expected of her. Pretty and popular, she studied hard, made her Filipino immigrant parents proud, and is ready to reap the rewards from the form of a full college scholarship. And then everything shatters. A National Scholar Award invitation compels her parents to reveal the truth. Their visas expired years ago. Her entire family is illegal. That means no scholarships, maybe no college at all, and that very real threat of deportation. For the first time, Jasmine rebels, trying all those teen things that she never had time for in the past. Even as she's trying to make sense of her new world, it's turned upside down by Royce Blakely, the charming son of a high-ranking congressman. Jasmine no longer has any idea where or if she fits into the American dream. All she knows is that she's not giving up because when the rules you live by no longer apply, the only thing to do is to make up your own. And it's published by Harlequin Teen. Cool. So uh, for those of you tuning in who haven't read the book yet and don't want things to get spoiled, um, you really should be listening to this after you finish reading the book. But we're going to give you like a five second. No, not even. We're just going to jump into it. (laughs) All right. Just pause. Make sure you read the book before or not. I mean, if you just want to hear us talk about it, um, that's cool, too. I think this is our first uh, modern contemporary contemporary book. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like heroin complex technically falls under contemporary. But I think because it's urban fantasy, Mm -hmm. it it's kind of different so yeah and this is our first i guess ya novel if you want to call that like a genre i, mean, I guess Car- heroin complex is, is kind of YA, but no it's new adult that's new different adult? oh yeah NA. New, yeah NA. <laughs> NA. <laughs> but yeah uh i guess we should start with our initial impressions yeah um so for me i kind of feel like this book wasn't meant for people like me um I can see if I was like a younger version of myself, I might be more like super into it. Um, it's definitely a YA book. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely yeah. meant for a younger audience. Like I had that trouble too, where I'm like, I'm in my twenties, and <laughs> like I like I was once a teenage girl, but I'm not that person anymore. So it's very hard for me to connect. But yeah, uh, but it was. I mean, it was it was fun to read. Um, a little frustrating at times because you're in the mind, it's first person narrative. So you're in the mind of this 18 year old girl who, um, is going through a rough time, which is, which is interesting. And what I really liked about the book is that, um, characters like, like Jasmine, the main character, you don't see that often in media in general, especially with this narrative where, um, because 
you know, media or rhetoric has always painted like illegal immigrants as like a pejorative, like uh, something to fear or look down on. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is a story of a, an uh, undocumented family. And she makes a point to like say she doesn't like saying illegal. They're undocumented because illegal makes her feel like a criminal when she hasn't done anything yeah. wrong necessarily. So, um, and this is really a story about, I guess, from Obama land, like the dreamers, mm-hmm. the kids who are brought here to the states with their family, and you know, for whatever reasons, visas don't come through, visas get expire, uh, things don't work out the way the family intends, mm-hmm. and but they end up staying as undocumented. Um, Immigrants, yeah. Immigrants. I mean, it was interesting for, like, I've read, I read books by like about undocumented immigrants, but it was the first time I, I was reading it from the perspective of, like, of a teenage girl and a Filipina at, at that, because I've never read a book with a F- Filipina um, protagonist. Mm. So. Um, I was really interested in a lot of the culture stuff that was happening. I was like, oh, like, this is how a Filipino family is like. <laughs> and, <laughs> like, very different from, from Korean-American families. And um, Yeah, and we, we, had, um, we had a couple um, Filipino book club members with us at our, at our meetup. And mm-hmm. they, they confirmed that the, while it was maybe a little exaggerated, it is familiar. Yeah, it's familiar. Yeah, which was cool. Um, Shall we get to character analysis i guess uh sure like let's start with (laughs) the protagonist jasmine so she's um the first chapter is about her being like not not even all american girl but like typical asian american overachiever who's also like a cheerleader like she wants to be the best at everything she wants to win nationals for cheerleading she wants to get into the best schools yeah, very type A, very yeah. focused. I mean, like the book pretty much jumps right into the main conflict within like the first two chapters. Right. So she receives the National Scholar um, Award, which is the, I guess, the book version of the, the National, National Merit, Merit Scholarship, yeah. um, which comes with a trip to D.C. Uh, to meet the president and a free ride to wherever, wherever school she wants to go to. Mm-hmm. And... Um, that triggers their parent, her parents, to reveal to her their situation, which is um, their that they're, they're undocumented. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess they were meant to come and work for a family member who was going to get them work visas, which would which provides a path to green card. But then the family member passed away, or um, I don't remember the exact details, but I think what happened was they did come. Legally, they had visas, yeah. but the business that they were working for was failing so badly. Right. And then when once the business closed, their visas were expired and they had to find new jobs yeah. that would sponsor them. But unfortunately, they couldn't find uh, any sponsors. Right. Which is something that it led to her parents taking menial jobs yeah. or jobs where they can keep a low profile, which also affects her character. I remember, in, in, I think it was the first or second chapter... Um, when she was talking about how she was planning to go to, like, like she wants straight A. She wants to t- take advantage of all the opportunities for... Uh, she, she she goes through... <clears throat> um, about her immigrant parents and how much they sacrifice, how much they're working, you know, menial jobs to provide her the opportunity, the opportunity to chase the American dream. And that kind of drives her own competitiveness and self, you know... Um, herself uh overachieverness <laughs> <laughs> i mean like i i mean i definitely think that she has a personality where you know she's driven and she wants the best for herself but i also think that her parents pushed her a lot mm-hmm. and you know it it's understandable because of their situation yeah um and she she's also the oldest child and you know Right. Once the oldest kid gets all of the opportunities, <laughs> the younger siblings are able to get through the door much easily. Yeah, and she also mentions that, um, like her her parents are skilled workers, but they're they're working um, low level jobs here, and that's part of the reason why like she wants to um, succeed for yeah. them, right? 
of their sacrifice, um, where it then turns out that they're working these low level jobs because they don't have visas, so they, you know, they 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 take jobs where they can lay low, yeah, and maybe not get found out. I mean, she obviously when she when she finds out, it's quite a big shock, and she is angry, and she has like all these like uh, mixed feelings, right? Um, and I think she brings up a good point where she yells at her parents and and tells them like, why did you wait? to tell Mm. me why did you wait until I got this scholarship that I can't accept anymore? Like, why did you even bother to push me to excel this much if it was all for nothing? Yeah. And that was the thing that we talked about at book club and just... Why would the parents do that? Yeah, why would the parents do that? um, I mean, from the parents' perspective, so her parents... um, I don't know if... I know the mom's name is Pilar... Right, mm-hmm. I'm not sure what the dad's name is. I don't. <laughs> um, it's daddy, um, yeah, and daddy. you know they mentioned that they didn't know that they thought if you did well in school, you can get the scholarships. They didn't know you that also required um, citizenship, um, yeah. which the National Scholars um, Award that she won does require citizenship. It requires a, a yeah. social security number to redeem. Because it's federal funds. So, like, in their minds, it's just like, oh, like, America is meritocracy. Like, yeah. like it doesn't matter where you come from or if you don't have a social security number. <laughs> if you are the best of the best, you are awarded uh, opportunities. Right. But I guess, like, that... I guess they were, like, misinformed or they didn't do their research. Which is... Um... It's relatable. I mean, my my parents didn't really like. They relied on me to figure out how to get scholarship scholarship money yeah. to pay for college. Um, they were, you know, they 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 didn't know the system. You know, where I was the one actively looking for stuff. So I, I can see why why they would assume that, or why they why it wouldn't come up until they had to. And also, I mean, seeing how it dramatically affected her. Like, mm-hmm. I can see why they wanted to, like, if possible, not mention it, you know? Yeah, I guess um, I think they found out that they were undocumented when she was going into high school. Mm-hmm. And I can understand that they may have thought, like, oh, we have time until she graduates. So maybe we'll figure something out by then. And, yeah. like, if we don't tell her, then, and it works out, no harm done. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um... And from the parents' parents' perspective, I mean that's totally understandable, you know. But also, like it didn't work. Yeah. Um, and it's I related to Jasmine mostly because I have friends in the same who were in the same situation as her, mm-hmm. um, where they um, pretty much found out they were undocumented and had to like had to figure it out. And so it's a story that I'm familiar with and also you know um essentially it's 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 a um it's a story of a dreamer right from the dream act um that obama signed which is provides um provides children of immigrants who came to the country illegally a path to citizenship if they you know went to school to do the right things and like kind of keep their noses clean Mm -hmm. and there's there's shades of that in the um so a lot of the early story revolves around this Senate bill or this um, House bill, yeah, uh, for immigration reform, which would provide uh, immigrant families a path to citizenship if they are law abiding. Yeah, if they're law abiding and if they were in the states for uh, a set number of years, yeah, yeah. and if they pay a <laughs> fee as well, it's right. like five hundred dollars per person, right? So it's yeah, not, there's, it's there's not even fee. like <laughs> that great of a bill, to be honest. And it gets killed. In yeah. The end, so, um, so for the first half of the book, they were holding on hope that this bill would pass, which would provide them or her a path to you know gain a scholarship and you know mm-hmm. gain citizenship. Um, it doesn't, and then that further drives her into despair. And I, so, um, if we're talking about Jasmine as a character, we should also talk about her her arc, right? Yeah. Um, and then. I think a lot of the arc, a lot of her character arc has to do with the other side of the something in between story, which is the 
the romance. Side yeah, the of it. romance plays <laughs> a really big part in the narrative, uh, more than I would like for it to. But so I understand it's part of the. <laughs> I understand it's part of the genre. Um, I mean, it's, it's a book for teen girls. So. I mean, yeah, it, like the genre, it's 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 romance. So, like, I yeah. I totally understand why um, her relationship with Royce, the the Royce. cute boy. That's such a rich white boy name. Oh, my God. I mean, she makes fun <laughs> of him for it, right? Like, his distant cousins are, like, in a reality show called, yeah. like, Royce Hills or whatever. <laughs> like, I, like it, it seems so L.A. to me. But, um, yeah. Uh, so, we would have to, like, go back to her Filipino background where, like, her parents are very conservative, very, like, strict when it comes to having relationships on like they believe in like no sex before marriage mm. like if you're going to have a boyfriend you need to have like a chaperone the whole shebang right yeah but her arc is kind of like having a life outside of uh, outside of school and outside of her family and trying to like rebel in this Really, I think it's a really small way, to be honest. But like, I guess with her character, it makes sense that it's kind of a big risk. What's well, her kind of enjoying the other side of being uh, an American teen? Which American is the, teen, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> going to parties and making out with boys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Lots of I making think this out was, with boys. This is why uh, I, I, when I was reading the book, because it's it's in first person, like I kind of felt like, oh, this is. You know, I like I like the story overall, and you know, um, for me, when when, I, when I'm reading stuff, I don't really, even if I'm not feeling it, I still you know want to experience. You know, once once I'm committed to reading the book, especially you know, book club, we have to. Yeah. Um, we can't bail halfway through, um, but <laughs> I did kind of get tired of how much she thought about Royce in the entire story. Yeah, I, um. <laughs> like I had to keep reminding myself, like she's 18. Yeah. I mean, she's 18 with no romantic experiences, which is why I kept, like... That's true. I, like, I thought, like, oh, she kind of reads, like, a 14, 15-year-old, and that's, like, different from a mindset of an 18-year-old who right. is getting a national scholarship. <laughs> I expected her to be more mature, and she is mature in, like, her responsibility with her family and, like, dealing with uh, the situation that's happening around her, but... When it comes to romance and relationship with her, uh, she's a complete noob. Yeah, she's a complete noob, and she like, <laughs> and, and there are times where I'm like, I'm like, really, you're you're going to like not, cont- not communicate with your boyfriend over this small thing where well, where you're like fair, jealous. I okay, mean... I can I can <laughs> like I can. T- like I can understand, I can give a little bit of a leeway there. I mean, to be fair, people in their like mid twenties, late like early thirties, still do that. Oh, uh, they shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why it's like understandable when you're like a teenager, but <laughs> when you're a grown adult, you should definitely communicate with your partner. But yeah, um, so she's you know going through like making all the mistakes um, with um, with her boyfriend who is um, Royce Royce um, Black Blakely Blakely. 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 Um, who is the son of a the son of the congressman, the Senate majority, no, the House majority leader, mm-hmm. uh, who is also the key architect. Like he's pretty much like, so like Congressman Blakely is the um, the dungeon master of the entire <laughs> story, like the game master. He's like everything that happens is because of him. Yeah. Which is <laughs> which is interesting because he like he's the one who brings up the inciting incident and then he's the person who fixes everything at yeah. the end. And it's just like, well, would there be a story without him? Probably <laughs> not. But Yeah, within this story there is the deeper like political thriller that I wish this story was, uh, which is like maneuvering immigration issues, personal issues. And Washington, like, um, politics. But um, instead we get a very, more of a a shallow um, description of what happens. Basically, it's, you know, what people say and what people think are two different things. And in the end, like, politics is about personal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, this is, like, jumping way ahead, but... um... 
when she when Jasmine runs out of options, she finally goes to uh, <laughs> the congressman, thinking right. that like he's not going to support her because you know he killed a re- like immigration reform bill that mm-hmm. she was counting on. And he's just like, yeah, sure, I can help you. Like, we can draft a private bill. And it's like, <laughs> and she's just like, whoa, wait a minute. Like, why did you kill the bill that would have like helped me in the first place? And he's just like, uh, like my party. Yeah, that's that's politics. That, this is you know, you're you're like you're, you're my son's. You're, you're snogging my son, so we're gonna. <laughs> you're you're my son's girlfriend. Yeah. Like, I can help you out. Like, that's. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> And even when she, like, goes to her deportation trial, yeah. like, the judge is like, where are all the letters from politicians? There's, like, nobody important. Which seems very specific, when I, now looking back at it. Um, I don't know how these, um, how these trials usually work. Yeah. But if that was such a big deal with this judge, you'd think her lawyer would have, like, prepped them, right? Yeah, I'm surprised that the lawyer didn't, like, demand them to draft letters to... He seemed kind of incompetent. At the same time, he had, like, a 90% success rate. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> um, okay. Sorry, we Yeah, back ahead. to the arc of Jasmine de los Santos. Uh, so, a big part of her arc is her coming to terms with... Like, it's, it's a coming-of-age story, right? So, yeah. it's like her... Taking her, recognizing her own, f- f- mm. is it her recognizing her own flaws or her recognizing her own shortcomings and then um, having more self esteem? Right. I don't know or, if it's really recognizing her flaws because, quite honestly, in in my personal opinion, she didn't really have that many, mm-hmm. which was my problem with like her arc overall. I I thought she should have made more mistakes. Well, but... yeah, I mean, more mistakes in terms of. Like panicking about her situation, yeah, like panicking and like her. But I, I think her her main arc was her projecting the, all the time. Right? Oh yeah, like she's <laughs> like, like when she meets uh, Royce's parents, she thinks that they're like total assholes and who are like race racist because and... she she thinks um, they look down on her. Yeah, because she's Filipina and yeah. like her their maid is Filipina and and it's just like. <laughs> she makes all of these assumptions and really i think i think it's her like her arc it's very much like her realizing that she doesn't deserve like she's not owed anything you know because mm. like this entire time she thinks that because she's so smart and so talented she deserves to she deserves citizenship. She deserves like all the attention, but she realizes that like that's not the case. It's a privilege that she's had, um, and really, it's just like realizing that she's kind of been arrogant this entire time, and learning how to like be a little bit more humble with yeah. like um, be a little bit hum- more humble and realize like how lucky she is, even though she's in like this terrible situation. Like she's lucky that she has like a very supportive family. She's lucky that she has. Like, yeah. She a has support a very, network like, at a school. very strong, like her entire school rallies around her. This was something that um, bugged one of our book club members was that like the entire school seemed to rally around her where like, if you think about it, like she's like head cheerleader, like obviously one of the, like, junior class president, one of the most popular girls. Like, there was probably a couple of haters in that school that would have been, like, yeah. present. But, but this is in, um, like, first person. Yeah. So I don't know if those haters would have, like, gone up to her face and be like, <laughs> go back to, like, your island. Like, I don't... Th- yeah. I mean, we have Mason. There's one hater in this story. Voice he, ooh, he's a He's a doozy. Oh, God. He's such a train wreck <laughs> of a person. Not he's like... like <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, giant boner head. Uh, he's, uh, so he's Royce's older brother who is, um, I guess just the family screw up, I guess. Well, he's not really a screw up because he, he was a national scholar as well. He mm. got into Harvard. He like, he's super intelligent. It's just that he's a douchebag of a person. He's a giant bully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a giant bully who is compensating, overcompensating for the lack of love that he received from his parents. <laughs> And he does so by taking it out on his brother Royce, who is just uh, who is Jasmine's boyfriend, and I I guess like 
Yeah, he spends the entire time trying to make her feel bad, so to make him feel yeah, bad. him feel good. Right. I mean, the whole thing with Mason and Royce, their relationship is that Mason, um, like he kind of abuses his privilege. He knows that he's rich. He knows that his dad is like, like has power in the government, and he thinks that he can just have anything that he wants it's just all about collecting at that point and like the book mentions that like when you're raised that way you don't really see the other side like you just kind of (laughs) you kind of have this mindset to just collect and just to be uh the best of everything yeah you you, it's the opposite what's the opposite it's instead of feeling like you you're owed stuff he feels like you're de- he deserves he deserves everything it, yeah. which is a little different too yeah um well let's talk a little bit about um royston and the, and the blakeleys who yeah. is uh, who are like the um besides jasmine's family is the other the secondary characters of the story well okay <clears throat> i would argue that jasmine's family have more of a role in this mm. book than the Blakely's because they're just more present. Um, right. Like I mentioned at book club that like, there's obviously like a contrast between the two. Like Jasmine's family is like very like involved with her life to a point where they're like, Oh, like, where are you going? Like yeah. you're seeing a boy. Uh, don't you need a chaperone? Whereas like Blakely's parents are like, here, take the car and yeah. just do whatever you want. Um, I mean, we had book club members who are Filipino and uh, they mentioned that like, while not every Filipino family is that conservative and that strict about romantic relationships, uh, like they did mention that family is a big deal. Like they, like it matters quite a lot. Yeah. Family first, and then your needs later. <laughs> and extended family too. You have the you know the grandma that's not related, but is still the grandma Lola. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's true. I guess the the Blakely, especially the Blakely parents, so the the mother and the congressman were ma- mainly there as like plot devices. I feel like to move the plot along. Um, the only person you really spend a lot of time with is Royce, the boyfriend, mm-hmm. or the the romantic. The romantic uh, second lead, I guess, a romantic lead. He's the romantic lead. Yeah, um, and he is, you know, totally the uh, like the sympathetic good boy. Like, he's a good boy. He's yeah, like because if you compare him to Mason, Mason has always like been on top of his game, and he, you know, he kind of tries to get his family's approval by kind of uh acting out and doing yeah. like doing terrible things to get attention whereas like with Royce he he does whatever he was his parents yeah made. like he tries to compensate by like following his like dad's orders interning for him and you know he's dyslexic so he kind of feels like he's not as good as his brother yeah. so he feels like he has to like work harder so very very different um yeah so his role I, I guess um we should should we talk about we should talk about his role um as part of the story right yeah so as a romantic lead his role is to be on her mind every single paragraph <laughs> of every single <laughs> page um He's, you know, he is... I think, okay, like, taking him out of the romantic context, like, he is... He is that white boy who, like, who doesn't really have an opinion on immigration and who's just like, oh, well, it's like, it has nothing to do with me, so why should I care? Until it does. Until it does. Yeah. And, um, and he's, like, kind of like the person who's just like, wait and see... Or like, oh, I don't want to like offend anybody, so I'm just not going to say anything. Yeah, which we've seen a lot of <laughs> in this past election season, and and just now, like people who are choosing not to say anything, <laughs> right? Say anything, and are like, nope, like not here for the politics. Just yeah, and then it's not until like the politics affect something that he cares about that he like. 
gets involved. Yeah, so like I would say that as much as he changes Jasmine, Jasmine changes him as well. Because mm-hmm. um, like before, like Jasmine wasn't really into social justice as well. Like right. she was like, I'm going to be a doctor. Whereas like he, <laughs> where voice is just like, you know, you're really passionate about this and you're like very organized and articulate. Like I feel like you could be a really good lawyer. advocate yeah. or a lawyer. And she does like make that decision towards the end. She's like, oh, I want to go into this because this is a terrible thing that I had to go through and I don't want other people to go through uh, with it. Yeah. And then, you know, she, she also encourages him to be more confident too because of his, his own self-esteem issues. And he also, you know, like as the reality of deportation comes closer and closer for Jasmine, you know, you start going through, all right, what are our options? Let's get married. Yeah, I was like, I knew from the moment Royce showed up that that was going to happen because I was like, oh, this is a book on like undocumented immigrants and she's (laughs) a teenage girl. Like, of course, this is going to happen at one point. I'm really glad they didn't go through with it. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm really glad that uh, Jasmine's best friend, Kayla, I, th- I think that was her name. Yeah, Kayla. Like, Kayla seemed like she was kind of a mess for most of the <laughs> book. Like, she kind of made really irresponsible decisions and uh, was very emotional. But in that one decision where, like, yeah, like it really mattered, she was just like, no, you guys are kind of young. And, <laughs> like, what if, like, you guys get divorced? And what if, like, you're making a mistake? Yeah. So dodged a bullet there. But. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, so, like, she breaks off the engagement, which is um, the opposite of when, um, so they also had an, an almost sex scene in this book. Yeah. Um, in um, in Royce's Porsche. Um, and that was when he kind of pulled the brakes on it. So these are some really real responsible kids here. Too responsible. Very responsible Should teens. have made more mistakes. <laughs> I was uh, like, I was flabbergasted when uh, she was driving them. Like she was driving Royce and Kayla Uh who were drunk. Yeah. And she had to like drive them home, but she didn't have her learner's permit. Yeah. And like the cop came and the cop didn't even check her license and her registration. Like I was just, I was just like, what cop does that? I mean, it wouldn't have helped with her getting her citizenship. It would have been game over for her. It would have been game (laughs) over for her, but I just wish that, like, I don't know, that moment seemed a little bit too out of reach for Mm. me. I mean, it would have been, like, nice if, like, the policeman was just like, okay, you don't have your license with you. You seem like a responsible kid. I'll let you go. (laughs) Like, at, at least, like, one thing, but... yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess putting the cap on to Jasmine's arc, she ends the book or she ends the story or she enters into the the last act being more confident or more aggressive in her. Like she's, instead of waiting for whatever happens, instead of being passive Mm -hmm. with her situation, she starts to, uh, she starts to take action, telling people about her situation, um, not keeping everything bottled in. And also, apparently, threatening her lawyer with not with really. a bad Yelp review. Oh yeah, that <laughs> and like constantly calling yeah. the congressman, being like, "Hey, get on it! Yeah, I might be deported. This is kind of important." <laughs> um, which is like nice because in the beginning of the book, it feels like because she works so hard, she not she like believes that she deserves not deserves, but like. Because I worked hard, good things will happen Mm -hmm. or, like, things will work out. Even with the reformation bill, like, the immigration reform bill, she's like, oh, it it will work out. It's a meritocracy. Like, I deserve it, so, like, I'm one of the good ones. Yeah, I'm one of the good ones. But uh, what she realizes is that, like, there are thousands of cases just like her. Like, what makes her so special that she should get special treatment? Right. Um, And she realizes that, like, it's not something that it's just handed to you because you're a good person. You actually have to work for it. You actually have to like be aggressive and fight for it because like you see that difference with her and her dad because her dad's super negative and he's just like, Oh, it's not going to work out. We need to like pack so we can go to the Philippines without like, yeah, her dad was the source of bad dad jokes and pessimism. Yeah. Or realism as he puts it. Realism. Yeah. (laughs) Well, it's like, 
you know, her dad, he realizes like their chances of getting citizenship or visas and yeah. their chances of getting to de- de- uh, deported. But he doesn't really do anything about it. Because, like, he wasn't, like, it was the mom who said, oh, let's get a lawyer. Whereas, like, he was just like, let's not. Let's just not do anything and wait until either we get kicked out or, (laughs) or, like, another bill passes. Like, he's more of like, oh, let's just stay where we are. Yeah. And for for Jasmine, that just wasn't an option because she didn't want to have to work, like, janitorial jobs. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. wasn't an option for her because she wants to go to college. She yeah. has all these deadlines. <laughs> um, so, oh, we're just jumping all over the place, but let's. I'm so, sorry. yeah, the second. So the second big conflict was so she finally, um, after the after the the after the hearing, um, their family is ordered to be deported by the judge by the, like the, the indifferent judge. Um, and the judge, as you said, made mention of like, uh, well, I don't see any letters from congressmen or important people, so you pro- you obviously aren't important, so I don't, I don't need to listen to you. And then so then she goes and asks Royce to talk to his dad, this guy who is the champion of killing this immigration bill that would have solved her problems. Um, turns out to be, oh yeah, sure, I'll help you. They try to push through a private bill, mm-hmm. um, which would grant her family visas yeah and then basically that gets put into motion until um it's leaked to the media to the and, media and so they're like you're a two-faced politician <laughs> you say one thing but you do the other yeah, so it gets picked up by political and um well it gets picked up by political and and the mainstream news oh fox news and then so he his office has to back out. off yeah. and back out. And so another chance of getting, you know, getting citizenship or getting another chance of getting visas um, vanishes. Mm-hmm. And so this is when she just says, screw it. I'm just going to enjoy the rest of my time. Yeah, I think like Jasmine's arc overall has is going from someone who, you know, is very passive and then gets very active <laughs> and then like towards the end it's just like she you know she gives up for maybe a chapter or so and yeah. then she kind of picks it back up she's like nope can't give up kind of got to keep going like yeah. it's um well that's when the the marriage proposal happens because that's like the last last last, um, ditch, last effort. ditch effort um and then she she uh, backs out and then that's when that's when you find out that oh the jerk brother is the one that leaked the story. Yeah. He comes back in, is a jerk, and then beats up his little brother. In the rain. In the rain. And then um, and then breaks down because Royce still loves him. I felt like there wasn't enough redeeming qualities for me to feel sorry for, for Mason. Mason. Yeah, I mean, he was there was like, like a sleaze. There like... was like the picture of him and Royce as, as kids mm-hmm. in the room that shows, oh, they were friends once. Maybe. But yeah, it was like I was like, man, this guy is like he's just mean for no reason. I guess there's a reason. It doesn't mean it's a good reason. <laughs> um, but I do want to like, I know we're jumping <clears throat> all over the place. Um, but I want to go to when Jasmine went to DC, right? And she's like, she meets the president. Yeah did you did you read that in Obama's voice? Because I sure did. I definitely did. I, like it's <laughs> not. It doesn't mention. Um, like what the president looks like, other than he looks presidential. Yeah. But I'm just like, oh, it's Obama. <laughs> it's like, totally Obama. It's totally Obama. And then like he mentions Kenya, and I'm just like, oh, it's Obama. It's yeah. Obama. <laughs> um, that was really cool, just because like I lived in DC for three years, so it was kind of um, interesting for them to describe, you know, like a, scene. a very DC scene, uh, which is um, getting led around the Capitol building, getting you know. Shaking hands <laughs> with like senators and, and yeah. yeah, it's uh, well, it's like a glimpse into what could happen to Jasmine if she was a citizen, if she could accept the scholarship. Yeah, yeah, 
And, you know, that's hard because it's just like, oh, my God, everything I worked so hard for and it's just slipping out of my grasp. It's... Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So we talked about Jasmine's arc. Um, I know I mentioned this earlier, but I think it's just really cool that this story is being told. Mm-hmm. It's important. It's yeah. Like we mentioned, it's super relevant to what's happening yeah. now. Which is putting a human face on the like the stigmatized yeah. like illegal alien undocumented immigrant. Yeah, um, I think when people think like illegal immigrant, undocumented immigrant, like a certain picture forms like a stereotype of like oh these people who, um, like who are like farmers and and they like sneaked in by like like through like fake floorboards or whatever like it yeah uh, like there's like this image that pops up but really it could be anyone it could be someone who's as high achieving as jasmine it could just be yeah Yeah. and it's these type of stories are more common than you think you know and it affects different communities like jasmine's family is filipino um i know quite a few korean americans who are some have similar situations too, who are who are dreamers or whose family um, came, and you know it's 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 a byproduct of both our open borders and our capitalist systems, where you know you, you have situations where people come here based on false promises, or and then are either stuck or you know decide to stick around to make it go. Because people come to America for the opportunity. Yeah. Right? It's a place where you can, like, because we're a capitalist society, because we're, you know, on paper, a meritocracy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, there's the idea that if you come to America, you work hard, you will succeed. Like the American dream. Yeah. Right? Actually, like, now that you've mentioned that, like, you, you meet the other national scholarship kids. And NBC, like, yeah. okay, yeah, like, so, like, Jasmine, obviously, she, she, like, worked her butt off, her family's poor, so she, like, definitely um, got there through merit, but then all the other kids are, like, rich kids from boarding school, and their parents are in the government, so it's, like, well, they're a Maryland, shoe-in. They're Maryland kids, they're probably, like, yeah. I mean, I mean, like, I'm not saying that they didn't work hard for their achievements, but it's, like, they had it a little bit more accessible to them, you know? Mm-hmm. Like they went, they had good schooling. They had private tutors. They had parents with connections. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, so you see two sides to it, where it's like, oh, there is meritocracy in a sense, but there's <laughs> also like, oh, people who got in through connections and money. Yeah, as people like to say, privilege. Privilege. Yes. <laughs> um, I think. Um, say what you will about how this, like, this genre might might not be something that I would see out normally. I like that it was put out, and I like I like that people can read it and look at it. And, and I know you mentioned that, and you, you scan the reviews on of this book when you're you're choosing it. Yeah, and you know a lot of the people who really loved it are like teen white girls, which is you know obviously that's the that's, that's the, the demographic. Target. But also, but they... also it's good that they're they're reading this, they're they're seeing this. Uh, you know, it's a good. I think it's a good primer on immigrant issues, and you know if you're if it really affects you, then you can you know read more because there's so much more about this stuff online and everywhere because it's such a hot issue especially now with you know all the immigration stuff going on um you know who knows they might like it because of the hot love story you know (laughs) i mean that's that's the bait you know yeah but um i highlighted some parts in the book um not the romance parts but (laughs) but like there were some parts about um just what it means to be a kid who immigrated here with like their parents, because Mm -hmm. I, I'm an immigrant too. I immigrated to the States when I was three. Um, And there's a long passage that I highlighted. I'm not sure if I'm going to read all of it, but I'm just going to go for it and you can edit it later. (laughs) Oh, it's, it's all staying in. Okay. Um, So this is in Jasmine perspective. Uh, I read somewhere that a lot of kids of immigrants grow up quickly and are given more responsibility than other kids. Their parents tend to depend on them, mostly because the kids can speak the language better and can act as a conduit to mainstream American society. The child becomes the parent and the parent the child. 
I feel a little like that now, like I'm older and wiser than my mom. If I do go to college, my life will become even more different from hers. If I don't go, I know I'll never live up to her dreams for me. It seems like any path I take will lead us further apart. Maybe that's part of what being a daughter means. Maybe that's how the children of all immigrants feel. Hits the yeah n- yeah. It's just like it hits it. It just nails it. I mean, that's that's the experience of the one to two generation, like first and second generation, and even first and one point five generation um, immigrant, which is the culture you grow up in is going to be different than the one your parents grew up with. And so every step you take within this culture, maturing wise, you're like getting further and further away from where, what your parents understand. Yeah. Right. I mean, my parents came here with, um, like my parents came here because my dad's work, like we had, my dad had a work visa and then we, we stayed here long enough that we were able to get green cards. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I was 16 years old, uh, my dad was offered a promotion, but it was back in Korea. And the company wanted all of us to move back. <laughs> and I remember like I remember this conversation pretty clearly because I like thought my father was insane for asking this. But he <laughs> asked me, uh, he's like, what would you think if we went back to Korea? When you were 16. When I was 16. Oh, that's the worst. And I just... And I, and I just, like, looked at him weirdly, and I was like, why would you, like, why? And he said, oh, because, you know, we, like, because of my work, we might have to move back. And and I, like, pretty much told him, like, if I go back, what is left for me? Like, like it's not like I can transition into the school system in Korea as easily. Like, yeah. I don't speak the language well enough. Their education system is different. They learn different things. Um it was a really odd moment for me because like for my parents, I don't think they realized that they were going to stay in America for this long. Mm-hmm. Like I, th- I think always in the back of their mind, they thought that we were going to go back to Korea. Like st- our stay in America is temporary. Mm-hmm. And because um, my parents did a fairly good job, like raising me with Korean culture instilled in me. <laughs> like, like I went to Korean school. I went to like cram schools. Like I was raised very traditionally, like, I think they thought that I could just, like, assimilate back mm-hmm. into Korean society, like, seamlessly. But, like, I had to explain to my dad. I'm like, no. Like, <laughs> like I, I know I, I don't have citizenship right now, but, like, I'm American. Like, I've always been American. And it's not something that you can just um, define by citizenship. Yeah. And, like, that was the main reason why like my dad was like okay i guess we're staying because <laughs> like you have no future if you go to korea like how will you go to college but so this was back in in atlanta yeah this was back in atlanta mm-hmm. um like i like i remember i was like like it was for like a month like we went back and forth on it like my dad's <laughs> like but what if we sent you to international school in korea and mm-hmm. i'm just like i'm like it's still not the same not doing that <laughs> Like, I'd rather you leave me behind and, like, I do my schooling here. Yeah. That's, it's, when you're a teen, major change is, like, so much worse. Yeah, because, like, yeah. like literally it felt like my, like, I had no more future. I was just mm. like, I'm not going to have an American high school <laughs> diploma. Like, I probably won't be able to go to American college. Yeah. it It was, like, a really big deal. And I can't possibly imagine i was not a good student so like i can't <laughs> possibly imagine like how uh someone like jasmine would feel where they like reach the highest honor possible right for like their academic career and like be forced to give that up and i guess this is a good opportunity to talk about just you know these stories it's not fiction it's based in like what's happening in real life i mean it's it, it happens and like honestly when i was reading this book i thought it was really optimistic i was like wow everything yeah. is just working everything out so let's <laughs> that's a good thing to end yeah our discussion on it's just like everything gets kind of tied up in a, like, a neat little bow which is like you know it's it's ya so it's a, it's a hopeful happy ending which is which is fine which is great um you know she makes up with her boyfriend. All her friends are back, you know, in stable relationships. Um, she gets um, the cases dropped against her family. They get they all, they all get visas and 
are she gets like a to... special visa because like like <laughs> she gets a full right to stand for thanks to the old the old lady, the old lady friend that she makes um everything works out and i think that's um that's something that our book club also pointed out was that everyone she talked to about her situation was so positive about it um which i guess it's good that she has such great friends that don't Mm-hmm. That don't flinch at this type of thing, <laughs> you know. They get donuts, and the whole the whole entire cheerleading, cheerleading team. Um, hugs. You know what? That's also something that works out perfectly. Is um, so during the in the middle of the book, she's so distressed about boy issues and deportation issues that she you know messes up at regionals for the cheerleading competition, mm-hmm. and they get second place instead of first. But then the first place gets disqualified because they use a choreographer which is the plot of oh, bring it bring on, it on oh my God. by the way <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking that too when i was yeah. reading it i was like oh my god and then they spend a chapter of them going to nationals and winning the national title which is like her like another thing that happens to work out for her yeah yeah Oh, oh, like I know, I know we're like wrapping things up, but I thought it was really weird that her best friend, Kayla, was dating Mason. Did you thought that was really like abrupt and weird that like. It was weird in that I don't. I mean, yeah, it. it, it like I felt like that. It seemed a little problematic. Like it seemed. Like, that part didn't need to be included in the story, and it would have still worked out fine. Like, yeah. Mason's a jerk. He would have leaked it, leaked the news about her getting a private bill anyway. So, I thought that was a little bit strange and out of character for her best friend. But, whatever. That's, like, a little pet yeah. peeve that I that I had <laughs> when, when I was reading it. Well, you know, it's, it's like we said, it's, it's a relatively drama-free... Um... But isn't that kind of nice, though, that it's drama free <laughs> compared to like what's happening yeah. today <laughs> like, <laughs> where like some people are like I was really surprised with uh, with all the news that's been coming out with the protests at JFK mm. and like how uh, there are people with green cards, people who are legal yeah. permanent residents here who are getting <laughs> detained and threatened with deportations. Just like, wait, yeah. what? Like so many like external things that could have like really made this into a more harrowing experience but you know most of the drama came from internally i mean the most drama from like other kids is from mason the jerk brother and like the queen bee at in dc yeah like i i I did have like a lot of like mixed feelings about this book but it it did make me think a lot to like my high school experience Mm -hmm. um because like i like atlanta has a big korean american community like believe it or not we're not like all farmers who are like y'all um but there's a good percentage of that community who are undocumented Mm -hmm. and like i know a couple of people who were kind of in the same situation as jasmine they uh they got good grades they did everything right and they find out in the middle of high school that uh they don't have visas they don't have um they don't have green cards and you know it it made me remember like how much privilege i had as like a high schooler who had legal residence like like permanent um residency in yeah. in in the states and like how quite frankly like how i didn't even think about my classmates or like or like the problems that they were going through and that kind of makes me. That kind of colors me as like a terrible person. <laughs> no, um, I mean, but no, that like, like, <laughs> like I, um, like I remember I like went back to Atlanta like after like my first year of college, like out of state, and uh, one of my summer jobs was to like help people write essays for college applications, mm-hmm. and like I had like at least three. Uh, three Korean kids who were in that same situation where they're like, um, they're like writing their college essays, but they kind of lose motivation halfway. They're like, what's the point? Yeah. Like, I'm not going to be able to pay for the college that I even get accepted to. Like it's all the, all the opportunities, and possibilities that doing really good in school gets you all of a sudden is closed. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. Like I had a so my college roommate, um, 
was in the same had the same situation too. And I always wondered why he was such like he was like a total hustler. Like he was you know, running a bookstore on Amazon, selling t-shirts, um, printing t-shirts in the garage, like like total entrepreneur. Like he started a gelato store. Uh, he opened a gelato store after graduation, and you know, it's because like he had to pay for his his own way. Like yeah. All his tuition, everything was was his. Like it, it was on him to put himself through school. And it's good that the story is out there. It's good that people are reading it. And I hope it leads them to be more empathetic. Yeah, definitely you know? like more empathy. We really need it at yeah. this time. <laughs> like more empathy and also like I think like for us, like because we're older reading in the perspective of like an 18 year old i think that's also important because a lot of times we brush off young people saying like oh you're being over traumatic like <laughs> like you like like you don't know what it, what real life is like just wait until the real problems hit but yeah. like i think it also reminds uh, older readers like us that young people you know they have their own issues and uh, we should take it with some gravity. <laughs> I will say this is the first time I've seen texting portrayed in books oh. and Snapchat being. <laughs> oh yeah, referenced. Snapchat was a first. Um, I will say there was no fire emoji, so obviously this is outdated. But <laughs> I mean, it's outdated by the fact that you know the president in this book is. That's Obama. true. <laughs> That's true. Who knew? Like, yeah. Hopefully, Jasmine got her. Her citizenship before the administration. I hope came her visa along. didn't get revoked. I know that would like we should like revisit Jasmine Sequel. one year later. <laughs> <laughs> Something in between. That was the name of her essay, by the way. Yeah, her, for her, her personal national... essay. On that note, that'll do it for our discussion of Something in Between by Melissa De La Cruz. Uh, check it out; it's um, available on Amazon, uh, Kindle, and bookstores everywhere. Um, if there is a bookstore near you. Uh, what's up for next month? Next month, we are reading Sorcerer to the Crown by oh. Zen Cho. It's a historical fantasy, and it's set in Regency England, where there are magicians and um, pretty much cool magic stuff. And it's written by uh, a Malaysian-British author. Awesome. So, Interesting. First non-American and our first our uh, fantasy. No, yeah. not our first fantasy. We've read we read different versions of fantasy. We've read Heroin Complex was urban fantasy. Monstrous is sci-fi steampunk fantasy. Not steampunk, but in that kind of aesthetic. And then this is our first. I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's our first historical fantasy. It's set in like a, his- a real historic era. <laughs> so... Historical I'm not fiction, a literary, I don't know. yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'm interested. Um, yeah, check that out. Um, you know, find it in your local library, go to your local bookstore, get it on Kindle, um, and read up. Our discussion will probably take place um, first week of March, March. Um, just because it's a short month in February. As always, um, feel free to join the Goodreads forums. And also like our Facebook page, because that's, that's where we'll set up our meetup information. Next month, we're going to try to do an online meetup in addition to our local meetup in LA. So keep an eye out for that. Um, it will probably be via Google Hangout. And I think those have a limit of 10 people. So hopefully we get, we get a full house. Yeah, and if there's too many people, then... We'll figure it out <laughs> somehow. Um, and yeah, if you're if you're enjoying our podcast, please give us a rating and review on iTunes. Um, it really helps us out. And also um, share it with anybody you know who might want to take part in our book club. I'm really enjoying reading more, um, reading different things. Um, I bet you never thought that you would read a YA contemporary romance. You know what? I thought I'd be reading YA. I just, you know. Thought it would be like Hunger Games? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't intend on reading about boys all so much, but uh, it's it's interesting. Is this what girls think about? Maybe. No, I know. On that note. <laughs> on that note, thanks for listening to Books and Boba. We'll see you all uh, next time. Happy reading.